Hey everyone. Hello, hello, I'm Liz. Thank you so much for joining me today. Um, and thank you to Michaels for sponsoring this class. So today we're doing a really fun, uh, I guess you would call it a trend or a technique. It's called a temperature blanket. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about the temperature blanket, um, like what it is and what it's all about. And then I'm gonna show you this specific temperature blanket, a pattern that I wrote for Michaels. Um, and how to do the stitch for this one. So, I mean, it looks really complicated and gorgeous, but it's actually uh, quite a simple stitch, okay? So we're gonna go over the whole thing and how to do this. So a temperature blanket is basically, the basic idea of it is you will pick one day for uh, the whole year. So you pick whatever year, and then you're going to make one stripe for that day for 365 days. The stripe that you make, you're going to make um, a color chart, and the colors that you choose for your project are going to correspond with the weather in your area on that day. So you'll have the chart and the chart that we supplied is actually in the pattern, but if you want to switch it up, you can use whatever chart you want. Like if, um, let's say you live in Florida and it's never going to get to anywhere near the 40, 30, 20 or 19 below degrees, you can switch it up and like maybe make your, um, you know, maybe make it a, just a two degree difference or something like that. So you can get more colors in there because if you, if it's all this, you know, you don't want it to be all the same color. So what we have is like 90 degrees and higher, 80 to 89 degrees, 70 to 79 degrees. And that's all in the pattern that was provided for you guys. And also you can see right here, I listed out every single color that I used in my temperature blanket. Okay, so you can, if you want it to look exactly like this, you can just use the colors that I listed out. Um, you know, for each row, each color for each row. If you want to personalize it, then you're going to use this color chart and you're going to find whatever the temperature is in your area or whatever area you want. And you're going to pick your colors according to that. You can even pick your own colors if you don't like it. So it's more like a um, technique. So you can really um, do a lot of modifications, change the change the area. You could even say, oh, I'm just going to pick, if you want to make it all right away, I'm just going to pick um, like last year's temperatures and then just find all those and then just do the blanket. But I think the idea of it really is just to take like one day at a time, relax and just do one stripe, put it away, do something else. Then the next day, look at the temperature and do another stripe. That's kind of the idea of it. So in the end, if you take the whole year, you're going to have something that looks like this. You can also make your blanket wider if you want with this stitch pattern. It's a multiple of eight. So all you have to do to modify the width is to, instead of starting with 185, you're going to start with any multiple of eight plus one for the turning chain. So I started with 185. So the multiple is 184, which is divisible by eight. That one is for the turning chain. So then you would just pick whatever number divisible by eight, larger than that to make it wider. And it's always gonna be pretty long because you're using 365 stripes if you wanna do one for every year. That's, a, that's another reason why, or one for each day of the year. That's why we try to use, when you're making a temperature blanket, a short stitch, like a, something with a single crochet in it, as opposed to a double or a treble, because if you do 365 rows of double crochet, you're gonna have like a super, super long blanket if you do the 365 total. So that's the basic gist of making a temperature blanket. Um, the thing I love about it is you can really modify it to fit, to suit whatever you want, um, like kind of whatever you feel like you're, the, you know, you, you want to do the trend, or you could do it exactly how I have it written in the, pat in the pattern, and it'll look just like the sample. All right, so let's switch over to my hands, and then I'll show you how to start this blanket, how to do the stitch, how to change colors. I'll try to go nice and slow for anybody that's new and feel free to um, at any point, ask me any questions that you might have. Okay, so let's look at the pattern. I like to go through the pattern. That usually helps people too if they're not real comfortable with reading uh, crochet patterns. Hold on, let me click this off. 
later. Okay. Got it. Okay. So like I said, we're starting with a multiple of eight. These are the colors uh, all listed here. So you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine colors. I think I only have eight here. I must have left one, but that's okay because really it's going to be dependent on your temperatures in your area. So we're using our Craft Smart, and this is 100% acrylic. They have tons and tons of different colors um, at Michael's that you can choose from. So you can really, like I said, make any modifications you like. If you want to switch up your colors and make it instead of so bright, make it like a little more muted, you can do that too. I mean, it's like endless possibilities. So it's a worsted weight yarn. So I'm going to use my five and a half millimeter hook. And let's start with, so here's where we start. And basically you're gonna do these instructions here and you're gonna start with the color that's listed here. So amethyst for rows one to two and then cornflower for rows three to seven. Um, so let's just kind of get started with any color because let's just pretend that I'm going by the, the temperatures in my area and I wanna start with that. I wanna start with the first day. So I'm gonna make my slip knot. This is how I do it. I just put one, the short tail over the long tail, over the long end. I put my um, pointer finger and my thumb in there in the little loop that I made. And then I give it like a twist and then I grab the short tail and pull it through. And there's your slip knot. So let's start out with, uh, we're just making the sample. So we're gonna do a multiple of eight plus one for the turning chain. So you can start with however many you want. The more you have, the wider it's gonna be obviously. So let's do a chain, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Okay, so we're gonna make, make our, hi, where are you located? Somebody said, where am I located? I am in Kentucky, Louisville, Kentucky, actually. Um, yeah. I didn't grow up here, but I, I love it. I completely love it. It's beautiful here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Let's keep going with our multiple of eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Indiana, oh man, it's so beautiful in Indiana. I'm like right near the border of Indiana and whenever we drive over there, I absolutely love it. So see, you can just keep going like this and then you just make your chain as long as you want. It's like maybe say, okay, I'm gonna like measure it to my bed and put it on the bottom. It's gonna be a little, the chain, make it nice and loose. Don't make it tight because then it's gonna be, you know, weird at the beginning. You have to make it nice and loose. So that way your edges are nice and even whenever you make anything, always make your starting chain nice and loose. Hi from Connecticut. I've been there too. I love Connecticut. It's another beautiful place. I actually lived in Florida for a long time, which I love too, but you don't get all the pretty seasons like you do in the other states. Uh, let's go with, let's see. Let's, this looks like a good measurement for a sample. So let's count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Sometimes it's easier just to count your multiples and get it to the width that you want when you're doing just like something simple like a blanket. Um, that way you don't have to count 185 chains because if you lose count, then you gotta go back and count 185, it's kind of a pain. So it's always fun to just use the multiple and get it to the width that you want. Okay, so now I'm going to do that one extra one because that's my turning chain. Now, that's our starting foundation chain. Remember, make it nice and loose. Don't ever make your foundation chain tight. 
and you'll see once you start working your project that it doesn't look good if you make it tight. So let's go to the setup. It says single crochet in the second chain from the hook and each chain across. Okay, well that's easy. Here's the first chain right there. That's the first one. This is the second one. I like to work into the back bumps of the chain. Um, this is the front of the chain. And uh, you can go into the center like that. Just right into the center of that chain. Or if you flip it over, and this makes a nicer finish, so that's why I always do it this way. Flip it over. And you see how you've got these little sort of ridges, bump, like a bump. It looks like a hill. Um, you're going to go right under that one loop of that bump. So this is the first chain right here. There's that first bump. We skip that one. And we go into the second chain or the second bump right there. So I'm just going to put my hook right under just that one loop. And then yarn over, pull through. Now I have my two loops on my hook. I'm going to yarn over again and pull through those two. And that is my first single crochet. So now at this point, we want to make sure we have only a multiple of eight. That plus one was just for the turning chain. It doesn't count as anything. So let's just count in, in eights as we move along with these single crochets. So we're going to go under the loop, just the one loop, which is called the back bump of the chain. That's two single crochet. Here I'm going under the loop. That's three single crochet. Under the loop. How, somebody said, howdy from New Jersey. I used to live in New Jersey too. Man, I didn't realize I have been to, and not, I haven't been to that many places. I did live in New Jersey. I grew up in New Jersey till I was about 16. And then I lived in Florida for most of my life. And then I moved here to Kentucky about two years ago. I have to say Kentucky is probably my favorite so far. Got a lot of um, like old buildings and really, really beautiful landscape and things like that. But I love New Jersey too. I have family there still, my sister. Okay, so I'm going right under those loops. I'm just working single crochets across. A lot of the stores are sold out online and Michaels, could you substitute the same colors in the start with, yes, you can substitute. So when you're doing yarn substitutions, um, you can substitute with a blanket. You have a lot more leeway because if your blanket is maybe two, three, or even four inches wider than the uh, pattern recommends, it's still a blanket. You're right. It's just going to be a bigger blanket. If you um, are substituting, if you're making like hats or sweaters or something like that, you have to be a little bit more, um, you have to, to, you can't do as many substitutions because if you're, if you have a sweater and they, the recommended yarn is like a fingering weight and you say, I'm just going to make it with a worsted, you're going to have like a humongous sweater. So um, with clothes and things that need to fit your body, it's much more important to make sure you get the correct gauge, no matter what yarn you're using. So as long as you get the right gauge, you can kind of substitute between worsted weights or DK weights or something like that. Um, but for a blanket, you could, you could be a little bit more like, oh, any worsted weight yarn will work with this blanket. So Red Heart is probably very, very similar to this. It's just a standard acrylic worsted weight. So that would uh, make a good substitute. I like the Craft Smart better because it's softer than Red Heart. I feel like Red Heart is a little like stiff. But you could probably wash it too and get get rid of some of that stiffness and put some um, like fabric softener in it we'll, as long as it's washable. But yeah, you could always substitute. You could substitute what colors you want to use. You could substitute what yarn you want to use. If you stick with any worsted weight for this particular pattern, it's you're going to be fine. And even if you want to use a bulkier weight, what you would have to do is um, just kind of start your starting chain with less stick less chains like don't do 185 do something you know do some do that thing where you just count out eight chains and then get to the length that you want it to be 
and then go from there. But you have to keep in mind too that um, the rows are gonna be taller. So the blanket will end up being much longer because of the, because of the, you know, the yarn just being thicker. Um, but if you choose any worsted weight, you should be safe with this pattern. Okay, so as you can see, just work in my single crochets across from my start setup. This is my setup row. It's just all single crochet. And then I always like to count just to make sure I'm on the right track. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I have a multiple of eight. Like I said, you can do any multiple of eight for this pattern that you want. If you're just starting out, it's always a good idea to just try to count your stitches at the ends of the row to make sure that you um, don't drop a stitch or add a stitch. Okay, so I'm just gonna do my last single crochet again so we can work on changing color because we're gonna change color at this point. Or let's say it's the next day, okay? So here's my last single crochet. I'm gonna yarn over and pull through like I do. And now when I'm at this point where I have two loops on my hook, I need to change color at this point. So I'm gonna drop the color that I'm working and you don't necessarily have to cut it, especially if you have, if you think you're gonna use it again within the next few rows. And then I'm just gonna take my next color and place it on the hook like that. And then just pull it through like I normally would. So you can see what happens is when you do it on that last yarn over, that's when you change color on the last yarn over. What happens is that last stitch that we worked is completely in the green. And now I'm set up to work my next stitch with the next color red, okay? So you always change on the last yarn over of the last stitch. um salt lake city utah okay that's another place that really looks beautiful to me but i've never been there that's one one place that i want to visit so, uh, utah and what's the other one montana i'd love to visit montana okay so we did the setup row and we're on to row one so it says chain one it does not count as a stitch throughout that means that we're going to work our stitch into that same spot that that chain one came out of because that chain one doesn't count as anything. And then it says single crochet in the first two stitches. Okay, these are the first two stitches, one and two. See from the top, there's your little V and there's your little V. Even though my hook is coming out of this first stitch, because that chain one is not counting as anything. This is the this is still the first stitch of the row. Okay. All right. So we're just going to chain up one. Turn your work. And I'm going to work that first single crochet into that same stitch, that very first stitch. Just go through both loops or under both loops and make one single crochet. Instead, remember it said the first two stitches. So here's my next stitch. Looks like a V. I'm gonna go under both loops of that stitch. Yarn over, pull up a loop. Yarn over, pull through two loops. Okay, so I have two single crochets. single crochet in the first two stitches. And that's what I just did. And now we've got a little star. We're gonna just kind of keep that in the back of your mind. Chain four, skip four, single crochet in the next four. And then when it has that little uh, semicolon there, that's always gonna indicate that that is where the repeat ends. So the repeat starts at the asterisk and it ends at the semicolon. Okay, so just keep that in mind. And whenever you see a semicolon, you'll always see repeat right after it, immediately after it, because that's an indicator of the fact that you're gonna do that set of instructions over and over. So it says repeat from star to the last six stitches. 
So we're going to do that all the way to the last six. So we're going to chain four. One, two, three, and four. Now let's look at our what we're working into here because we need to skip. So we need to skip this one. That's a stitch. Skip, skip, and skip. So we're skipping four of these stitches from the setup row. One, two, three, and four. And then we're going to work a single crochet into the next stitch, which is right here. So it said chain four, skip four, and then single crochet four. That's what the pattern says. Chain four, skip four, single crochet four. One. That's two. That's three. And four. So far, so good. And now we're just going to do that all the way across. So if you have a big, long startup row, you're going to just continue to doing that all the way across until you get to the last six stitches of the row. So one, two, three, and four. Okay, going to skip these. One, two, three, and four. Single crochet four. One, two, three, and four. Okay, now where am I at here? It looks like I'm at the last six stitches of the row. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. Right, so I'm at the last six stitches. So I know that I did that right. Right. If you got to here and then you had only like five left, then you missed a, skip, a stitch somewhere. You have to rip back and fix it. But if if the pattern says uh, you're going to repeat that set of instructions from the asterisk on, so chain four, skip four, single crochet four, you're going to repeat that to the last six stitches. So I know I'm I'm right because I got to the last six stitches and I ended where it told me to, which is single crochet in the next four. So now I'm going to do chain four, skip four, single crochet in the last two. So it's telling me this is what you do when you get to the last six stitches. You do this part right here. So you can see that it's, of course, usually what happens at the end of the row is the same thing that happens at the beginning of the row to make it like uh, symmetrical, I guess. So you see how I have two single crochets and then I have my chain four, skip four. So at the end, I'm gonna have two single crochets and my chain four, skip four. So one, two, three, and four. One, two, three, four, skipped, and then single crochet in the last two. One and two. Okay, now let's say um, right here we're on the next day. So we're gonna switch to another color. Let's say the temperature changed and we're gonna, let's find some, let's do this. I'm picking like these colors do not look great together. <laughs> once, you get, once you get it all done in the blanket, it looks gorgeous together, but. I think because I went to like a really hot day to a really cold day, it probably would never do that in real life. So, all right, I'm at the end. Remember, you have to switch colors at the, at the last yarn over of the last stitch. And I'm just gonna leave this hanging. I'm not gonna cut it yet. I don't like to cut my colors if I don't have to, because I like to just pull them up along the, the side edge of, the, of whatever I'm doing. Okay, so here I am at the last yarn over. I've got my blue. I'm just going to place that right on the hook and pull that through. And then you can pull that red down to tighten it a little bit. Now we're going to start working with our blue, whatever color this is. Cornflower. 
And this, I'm just using whatever I'm grabbing for my sample here. But you're going to go by, like I said in the beginning, the temperature, uh, how you have your chart set up, or the pattern to make it specifically like the sample. So I'm just going to chain up one, turn my work. Now for row two, we're going to single crochet in the first two stitches. So just like we did before, the first stitch and the second stitch. Okay, now we've got this chain right here. So it says working in front of the chain four space, you're going to single crochet in the next four skip stitches from two rows below. Now, when you're reading a pattern and you see it says two rows below, this row in the blue is the working row. So that's the row that we're on right now. This row is one row below in red and the green is two rows below. Okay, so working row, one row below, two rows below. Now, all we're gonna do is work in front of this chain and we're gonna work our stitches into these four stitches that we skipped two rows below. So you're gonna do a single crochet and I'm gonna work just with my hook in front of this chain and not in back. Sometimes a pattern will say in back or behind and sometimes it'll say in front. So in this case, we're gonna go in front. And we're just gonna go into that skip stitch, yarn over and that chain is gonna kind of get like encased in there so you're working around it. And then you're gonna like sort of pull this up a little bit to make like a longer single crochet since you're working two rows below. Cause you don't want it to be like too tight and squished around there. So just pull that loop up and then yarn over and pull through the two loops on the hook. So it's kind of like a spike stitch, but kind of not because this is just chains. So I'm gonna do the same thing here. Go into that skipped stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, continue to pull that up so you get some length there. And then yarn over, pull through two. Okay, so we'll do that again. We're doing that to all four of these skip stitches. Pull up, pull that loop up, yarn over and pull through two. And here's the last one right here. We're working around that chain four, pull that loop up, yarn over and pull through two. Okay, and that's what that looks like. Then, so what we did was we did working in front of the chain four space, single crochet the next four skip stitches, two rows below. Now there's a, a double star right here. Okay, so just keep that in the back of your mind. And then it says chain four, skip the next four stitches and then we have the semicolon. So the double star doesn't mean that that's the end of the repeat the semicolon means that that's the end of the repeat. So you're gonna continue doing um, what the instructions say. So we're gonna, at this point, we're gonna chain four and skip four, and then we're gonna go back to the repeat, back to the first asterisk. That two, the double asterisk doesn't come, uh, doesn't mean anything until the end of the row where we end the last repeat. So we're gonna do chain four, and then we're gonna skip these four single crochets. What do you call the stitch when you're working two rows below? Uh, I just called it a single crochet in, the, um, in this pattern. It can be called different things. If you're, if you're working like um, where it's like solid single crochets, just rows of single crochets, it's often called a spike stitch when you work two rows below. Um, but, but it's like those stitches in the spike stitch, you, it's like kind of like worked stitches, right? So like you would, you would work your single crochet into this single crochet that's already worked. 
and then you would make a spike stitch. In this pattern, these stitches aren't, aren't worked yet. So I just called them single crochets. But you know, stitches are, um, it's not always universal with crochet patterns. You'll see things called different things and worded different ways. So it's always good to just kind of get used to reading uh, patterns. You'll get familiar with the basics, but you will see things called different names and worded differently. Okay, so at this point, we're gonna do chain four and then we're gonna skip these four red single crochets. So one, two, three, and four. I'm just gonna skip these guys and then I'm gonna do exactly what I did right here. I'm gonna work over the chain four and into these unworked stitches from two rows below. So pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through. And in both cases, like when you're working a single crochet two rows below or any stitch really two rows below or even a, or a spike stitch, you always want to pull that loop up a little higher than you would with a regular single crochet. And the reason for that is just so you don't squish it down. So let me show you if I were not to pull up that big loop, um, like pull that loop up a little bit. And I just did like a single crochet, like so, let's say you're real tight crocheter. So everything kind of gets puckered and squished, right? So don't, don't be too tight with your stuff and pull up that loop. It's better to be kind of loosey goosey than super tight, okay? That's why we do that to keep, to keep our rows nice and even and to keep our stitches nice and even at the same tension. Pull that loop up. Because you have to pull it up to get to the height, right? You need to get that to the, to the height of the blue row. And pull that loop up. Okay. And now I'm going to do that again. So I'm going to chain four. One, two, three, four. And let's see what the pattern says here so I can explain what the double asterisk means. Okay, so single crochet in the four skip stitches, two rows below, chain four, There, that's what we're doing, the chain four, skip the next four stitches, skipping these four red ones, and then repeat from star to the last two stitches. Okay, so if we keep repeating from star, we're gonna, um, we want to keep repeating that till we get to these last two stitches and it says end the last repeat at star star. So usually a repeat will end where the semicolon is, but in this case it's the repeat is ending here so all the way across the row you're going to go through all of these steps, but when you get to the end you're going to end it right here so it's kind of like the repeat just cuts off at a certain point that's when you'll see the. The double asterisk when the repeat doesn't, when you don't work the, the entire repeat all the way through. And that usually or always happens at the end of the row or the round. So we're gonna do four single crochets and the stitches two rows below, three and four, okay? So what, did, what was the last thing I just did? I did four single crochets and the skip stitches two rows below. So single crochet in the four skip stitches two rows below, double star. That's what I just did. I ended my repeat right there. Instead of going through the, the total of the repeat, which doesn't end till here, I ended it short. So I kind of cut it short to where it needs to be. Okay, ending last repeat at star star. We did that right and then what do we do, do with those last two? Single crochet in the last two. So that's what the double star means or the double asterisk. It just means you're ending the repeat. You're cutting it off at a certain point rather than doing a full repeat. 
So let's just do single and single. Okay. And now we are on to row three, and that's actually the last row. And then after that, it, it repeats um, the same two rows. And you can tell what's kind of going to happen, right? We're going to do our two single crochet in the end of the row and our two single crochet at the beginning of the row. And then we're just going to work in those skip stitches. So it's kind of the same thing. It's just that you're alternating where the um, chains are. OK, so let's go with, let's see what color we have. That's looks pretty, this yellow. This is the butter. Came out nice and easily. I just got a, grabbed a little bit from the center. Where's that end here? I didn't want to open a new one, but I wanted to show you the butter because this, one, this one's like my favorite color here. And these balls are, these uh, skeins are very easy to pull from the center. Just grab, grab a little bit from the center. And with some of them, like with this one, it's already right there. You don't even have to see if they're purple. Sometimes it'll be right there. Sometimes it gets squished in. So if you don't see it hanging out, you just, oh, there it is. It's right there. So with these type of this yarn, it's really, really easy to find the center. Some yarns are not, not as easy. Okay, but this butter is really pretty, so I want to use it. And like I said, just for the purpose of this class, I'm just grabbing whatever color, but you can go through and I have it all listed out which colors to use if you want it to look exactly like the sample. Okay, so I'm on my last yarn over. Just place that yarn right on my hook, pull it through. Tighten this up a little bit. And I'm going to chain one, turn, and single crochet in that same stitch, and single crochet in the next single crochet. And now you can almost guess what we're going to do right here, right? We're going to chain four. So let's see what the pattern says. Chain one, single crochet in the first two stitches, chain four, skip four. Working in front of the chain four space, single crochet in the next four skip stitches, two rows below, and then there's my semicolon. So that's my complete pattern repeat, right? So I'm gonna chain four, one, two, three, or it's really very a very simple stitch and it works perfectly for the for a temperature blanket because it's nice and sh the rows are nice and short so you won't get like a super super long blanket. Here are my skipped stitches from two rows below. Remember yellow is the working row, blue is one row below and red is two rows below. So I'm just going to go into that first skip stitch and pull up a loop. Yarn over, pull through those two loops. And have a nice like long single crochet. Sometimes these are called long single crochets. People call them different things. But if you see something in a pattern and you you've never seen it, like if you say if it says do a bobble or a spike stitch, it's always defined somewhere in the pattern. So you don't have to go looking it up because they have different meanings among patterns. So if you're not sure what it is, always find the stitch guide. I don't have a stitch guide here because we did just the basic single crochet in chains. But um, if, it, if it has something like a bobble or a popcorn or a spike, it, it will be up here. It'll say stitch guide. And then it will give you a definition of exactly how to do that stitch. OK, so now here I'm going to chain four. One, two, three, four. And then I'm going to single crochet in these four skip stitches, two rows below. One, two, three, four, okay, and then I'm going to, here I'm at the end, but you can almost guess what we have to do. We're going to chain four, one, two, three, four. 
And it says right here to the last six stitches, these are the last six, right? Chain four, skip four, single crochet in the last two. Chain four, skip four, here's my last two. Single and single. You should always have two regular single crochets at the beginning of the row and two regular single crochets at the end of the row. Okay, so now let's say I'm here and I haven't um, cut any of these. So if I am on, um, if it's like, oh, okay, I need red again, right? Like here's the red, I haven't cut it. So instead of um, cutting it and adding a new ball, you can just grab this red from here. So I left, it, I left the tail on the ball. So all I do is kind of pick that up and then just put it not too tight onto my hook. And then what will happen is you'll get a float like this. So if you have green down here and you're all the way up to here, you don't wanna grab that green because then you'll have a, a long float that goes from there to there. But if it's only between, I don't know, maybe two to four rows, you'll have a, a, a short float like that and you can cover that up. So that's what I would do. And that just prevents you from having to weave in 300 or probably more like 600 because you have ends on both sides, um, ends. <laughs> okay, so let's do another row. Let's go through a couple rows real quick. And then I'm gonna show you if we had it to where two days were the same, right? So like it's 85 degrees today and it's 85 degrees tomorrow, I'm gonna use the red again. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Or if it's like, um, if you're working this, this pattern the way it's written out and you have it says rows two through four red then all you have to do is turn your work sometimes this gets covered up a little bit see how it looks like there's only three stitches available that's because this one just kind of gets covered up because of the way the work leans so just move it over Make sure you don't skip it. Make sure because it's covered, you don't say, oh, I'm just gonna go on those three. Don't skip that one, that'll mess up everything. You just have to move over the yarn a little bit. Two, three, and four, and then single crochet in the last two. Okay, now let's say it's the next day and okay, I'm doing the same exact color. I don't have to switch colors. Then I would just chain up one Chain up one, turn my work, and work the next row with the red. Okay, one, two, three, four. Go into those stitches two rows below. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. See what I was saying about it being covered up a little bit? There's one, two, three. That's the first one right there. Just don't skip that one. One, two, three, four. Skip, 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 skip. And then there's my last two. So you're gonna keep just going along like this. Um, for basically 365 days. Let me show you my sample here so you can get like a close up of. How it actually ends up looking. Once you get um, a lot of rows done. It has like a really cool texture where it almost looks like a, almost like a chevron. Um, but you can see some rows, we use the same color for two, two rows or even three rows, like right here. There's a lot of the purple right there. And then it goes down to the warmer colors. 
So we're going through summer. And then over here, we probably had like spring, some colder days from the winter. So how, how the winter, so you kind of need a place that changes temperatures <laughs> if you're gonna do this. It can't, can't really be Florida. Like I said, you, you'd have to adjust your um, temperature chart. So here's like winter and then the, it's, it's the cool color still, but it starts to get a little warmer and you go through the summer. It really is a cool, cool idea to have this sort of reflect um, what the temperatures are. And in the end, you have a really beautiful, very, very beautiful, colorful blanket. Now for this one, we don't have anything in the edges, right? These are the side edges. If you want, you can make um, a row of single or round or whatever of single crochet over all these edges and then go around the top and then go around the other side, but it would be one color. So you'd have it, you know, with all the color stripes and then you'd have like, maybe you would have to pick one solid color to go along the edges. So however you want to do that, if you want to do like a single crochet just to cover the edges, but you are going to have a ton of ends to weave in right here. So let's say, so here, if you get to the last row, then what you're going to do to make um, a border is just single crochet and then do the same things, um, single crochet in these stitches from two rows below. And then when you get here, instead of making another chain, you just single crochet into these stitches and that will close up uh, any of the holes, like this hole that, that's made from the chain, if you wanna put a border on it. So then you'll have a nice solid, um, see you'll have a nice solid edge for the top edge. And then you'll have to cut all these guys and you're gonna have to do some serious weaving in the ends. So if you don't like weaving in ends, ooh, temperature blanket, <laughs> you have to weave in a lot of ends. All right, so here's a couple ends here. I'll show you how to weave them in real quick. And then, uh, like I said, you could always use, if you use the floats, you might want to consider making a border because you'll have those floats hanging over the edge like that. Where's, where's that float that I made? Here. So see how you'll have this long piece here? What you can do is just uh, make a border and enclose that float into the border. So just work the single crochet over it so you don't see that float. But if you don't wanna make a border, then I would not try not to make these long floats. This one doesn't look too bad, but try not to make them too long or it's gonna be kind of an eyesore if you don't have a border. If you have a border, you can easily work right over those floats and you'll never see them. Okay, so I'm just gonna put my yarn on my tapestry needle. And then I'm gonna go right under a couple stitches of the, um, col the, the corresponding color. Don't go under a different color. This is gonna hide it, of course. So you don't wanna go under the red because then you're gonna see that yellow. And I can go under maybe right here. And then maybe one more, like you don't have to go crazy with it. As long as you get it under a few loops, Cut it, it will not come out, even if, if you wash it and stuff like that. People always think that it, it unravels, but it never, ever, ever does. You just have to do like a little bit of a zigzag. So let's go under the blue. Do like a little zigzag here under this one and then back up. And then maybe, I don't know, go into, into the front. So we've hidden that blue tail. 
And let's hide, or you can have to do it on both sides. Let's hide this, this other yellow tail. And then I'm going to zigzag back up. See, I'm going under the red, but I'm still in the yellow. So you're not going to see it. See how I'm still under the yellow? And I'm still under the yellow here. And then I just kind of zigzag back up. Cut that, and that will never, ever come undone. So you always want to weave in your ends. Don't, don't make knots. The knots you'll feel and you'll see, but the ends, you'll never see them. So yeah, so that's what, what your edges are going to look like once you weave in all of those ends. And if you want to put a border around it, just put a little border around the whole thing. So I think that's about it. Let me see if I, does anyone have any questions? I know that was kind of long, but <laughs> hopefully we got through everything. And um, this is just a repeat of those last two rows that we did over and over and over until you get a nice, big, long, gorgeous blanket like this. You could do it all at one time, or you could do it how this kind of trend was intended, which is to do one row per day that corresponds with the temperature in your area. Thank you so much. Oh, you are welcome. And I thank everybody for being here. And I'm usually here. You're welcome. I'm usually here once a month. So I will be back in June. So check out uh, what classes are available. Michaels has tons of great classes. And um, yeah, I'll be here again. I'll be here every month. And thank you very much for joining me and have a great rest of your weekend, guys. Bye.